Congressman Steve Womack is here with us today. Congressman Womack, thank you so much for joining us here on 4029 News on the Record. You've served for six terms now in the U.S. House of Representatives. Why do you feel the need to ask the constituents for another term? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, our country is on a uh, very dangerous path right now. And uh, I believe that I'm in a position uh, to join the rest of my colleagues, particularly those uh, on the Republican side of the aisle, um, to uh, chart a new path for our country. Um, we are in the uh, throes right now of uh, serious inflation, uh, lack of border security. We've got a, uh, a major undertaking going on in Eastern Europe right now. Uh, the border is not secure. Um, we have $30 trillion in debt uh, and the deficits as far as the eye can see. Uh, we just need a new path for our country. And I'm excited, frankly, uh, that the Republicans have an opportunity now to change course in the House of Representatives. I'll leave the Senate alone for a minute, but at least in the House of Representatives, uh, I'm excited for the opportunities that we think are going to present themselves in the midterm elections in 2022. All the polling indicates that uh, the wind is at our back. We have an opportunity to govern once again, and um, I, I hope to be part of that. I have a very senior position on a very important committee in the Congress, the Appropriations Committee, where I rank on the and hope to be the chairman of the Subcommittee on Financial Services and General Government with service on the Defense Subcommittee and the Transportation Subcommittee. So I'm in a remarkable position to really, uh, I think, uh, make some uh, positive changes, not only for our country, but specifically specifically for the third district of Arkansas. Now you did mention inflation and that's something that we certainly want to ask you about. What is Congress's role in controlling the current inflation, which seems to be rising by the week? Well, you have to get to the root cause of inflation. And uh, frankly, a lot of it is just the fact that you've got a lot of money chasing a limited supply inventory. And it's a classic supply and demand sort of uh, phenomenon that we're in right now. And I fault the federal government for being a major player in, uh, in this hyperinflation. I mean, we've thrown trillions of dollars into this economy, uh, while at the same time, a lot of the policies that our president and, uh, and my friends on the left uh, espouse are um, counterproductive to what I believe should be growth in the economy, and that is letting the free market do a lot of that work, uh, putting the power in the hands of the people rather than a bigger, more expensive uh, government. And, and, and I think that's clearly one of the big differences that we will see play out in the midterm elections in 2022. This, this whole notion uh, that government should be the panacea for everything uh, that uh, all the challenges that we face as Americans. And, and I just don't believe that. I believe that uh, a limited government uh, lower taxes, fewer regulations is what we need, not uh, not the opposite. And that's where a lot of this agenda on the side of the left has been taking us. Now, you have mentioned the budget and the debt as well, and you have experience in the House Budget Committee as well. In the past year, how do you think the lawmakers have been handling the budget? How do we control all this spending that you've been talking about? Well, you know, we lost the uh, majority in mm -hmm. 2018 in that uh, in that election. And since then, there hasn't been a legitimate budget passed in the House Budget Committee since I left the Budget Committee. And uh, in fact, the last legitimate budget that came out of the Budget Committee was the FY19 budget that I led. And by the way, that budget did balance in seven years. Uh, I'm sorry, in nine years. Uh, it, it did get to achievable balance. Uh, though it called for some very difficult challenges and in, in, in votes that we might have to take as members in order to chart a new fiscal glide path for our country. Um, so I don't think we've done very good at it at all. Also in 2018, I led a joint select committee on budget process reform, and we got very, very close to some changes in the 74 Budget Act that I think would have uh, helped us avoid where we are today. We have funding through the 11th day of March, uh, in the current fiscal year, uh, and we, we haven't seen regular order, that is budgets and appropriations done on time uh, in the entire time I've been in Congress. So uh, sadly, most of the people that have come since I've come to Congress don't even know what regular order looks like. So, uh, you know, if Congress, that, that's, that's a fundamental duty of Congress. Pass budgets, do appropriations. I mean, that's what 
that, that, it, that in national security, I can't think of two things more fundamental and more important to our duty than those. And, uh, and we're not doing very well on the budget and appropriations process. Now, while we're on the subject, I'm going to ask you just one more question on the budget um, and spending. What do you feel we're wasting way too much money on? Just a couple of. <laughs> well, um, it, it's a complicated uh, situation, but uh, here we are with a major national security threat going on in, in Eastern Europe. And my friends on the left want to take money away from DOD and spend more on the domestic side. And as an appropriator, we have fought that uh, temptation. Now, there are a lot of good things on the domestic side that we need to be doing, and we need to be doing probably a little more healthy, healthier than we are today. Things like the National Institutes of Health, the Centers for Disease Control, uh, these are very important programs for our country. But uh, my friends on the left have this insatiable desire to want to uh, provide more freebies for the American people, which is always pretty popular with a lot of folks. Um, and and take some of those dividends out of the uh, out, of, out of the national security apparatus and and I just think that's counterintuitive to national security which is a fundamental duty of ours so uh, look we we can have that robust debate but if you don't pass a budget and, it, and if you don't set your top line numbers and then have a robust debate on the on the floor of the house in committee and on the floor of the house on what the spending priorities of this country should be, uh, then you're not doing the people's business the way it's designed. Instead, we're kicking this in the, all these decisions up to the four corners of leadership, and that's just not uh, the way our, our framers intended for it to happen. All right, Steve and Mac, thank you so much for joining us on 4029 News on the Record. The Republican incumbent uh, for U.S. House of Representatives will be back in just two minutes with more questions.